Flipper is an acronym for Korea Pathfinder Rule Auditor, and its Korean name is Dami. It is South Korea's first Rule Auditor and has been developed since 2016. It will be launched in early August 2022. It has a total of six science and technology carols and will travel in VLT orbit for about four and a half months to reach the moon and then enter the lunar mission orbit at the end of December 2022. Total mass of Ganuri is 678 kilograms. After launch, two solar panels, a high gain antenna and a magnetometer are deployed for flight configuration in space. Total six payloads are equipped in the Danuri. Lunar Terrain Imager, LUTI. Wide Angle Polarometric Camera, POLCAM. Gamma Ray Spectrometer, KGRS. Magnetometer, KMAG. Delay Tolerant Network, DTNPL. Permanent Shadow Region Camera from NASA, SHADOWCAM. Danuri is launched toward the sun, not the moon. It will travel for about a month as the sun gravity pulls it. Finally, it will reach around the L1 Lagrange point, which is the point of equilibrium under the influence of the sun and the Earth's gravity. After that, when the TCM burn is started to make sure it can reach the moon on the desired date, it will be pulled by the gravitational force of the Earth, the Moon, and the Sun to travel several million kilometers. Then, it will naturally approach the Moon that is revolving around the Earth. After entering the lunar orbit, Danuri will maneuver several times to reduce the orbit altitude. Finally, it will reach the mission altitude of 100 kilometers in polar near circular orbit for six payload missions. LUTI is a high resolution camera that has the mission to take images of the lunar surface. POLCAM is composed of two cameras slanted by 45 degrees each to take polarimetric images of moon surface. The gamma ray spectrometer is used to make a map of five major elements on the entire surface of the moon. Magnetometer is used to measure the strength of the magnetic field which is invisible. Shadowcam will record images of the permanently shaded regions around the poles of moon where no sunlight can reach. DTNPL will conduct the world's first communication test on the moon. From this time on, Korean space research and development will experience a very important turning point thanks to Danuri. It is a very significant milestone in the history of Korean space exploration. Danuri is just at the beginning. And if we are more determined and committed to technology development for space travel, we will be able to reach Mars, asteroids, and so on in the near future.
Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 40 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, Power carrying the KPLO payload to a ballistic lunar transfer orbit. So we are beginning to throttle down the engines on the first stage to prepare for a period known as Max-Q. During this period, the vehicle is going to experience the highest amount of aerodynamic stresses vehicle on supersonic. the vehicle. Max Q. And there was Max Q. So the engines are coming back up to full power. Uh, we have three events coming up in quick succession in about a minute. Uh, first up is MECO, that stands for Main Engine Cutoff, followed by Stage Separation, and then SES-1, which stands for Second Engine Start-1. Main Engine Cutoff is where the first and second stages, oh, excuse me, engine chill Main Engine Cutoff is where the nine engines on the first stage will shut off in preparation for Stage Separation. That is where the first and second stages will separate from one another. The first stage will make its way back to our drone ship to attempt its sixth landing. And the second stage will continue with SES-1, which is where the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will start up and continue to propel our KPLO satellite to its desired orbit. Those events are coming up in about 10 seconds. For now, we are enjoying some excellent, excellent views of Falcon 9 during its ascensions. Main engine cut off. Stage separation confirmed. Back ignition. Uh, we saw the confirmation of stage separation and uh, the ignition of the Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage. Uh, coming up in um, a few seconds, we're going to be looking for fairing deploy. Uh, those fairing halves will separate from the top of the second stage and make their way back to Earth. Fairing separation confirmed. And off they come. So uh, those two fairing halves are now falling back to Earth. Uh, those are the fourth flight for both of these fairing halves, and we are going to be attempting to retrieve them with our, with the help of our recovery vessel, Bob. So we're coming up on T plus four minutes into the mission. We have a couple of views on screen. On the left-hand side is a view of that first stage uh, continuing to make its way back to Earth. And on the right-hand side is a view of the Merlin vacuum engine. Uh, on the opposite side of that engine is uh, the second stage and uh, the KPLO payload. So things continuing to uh, go smoothly after liftoff. The next major milestone for the first stage occurs uh, around the T plus six minute and 50 second mark, it's going to be the first of two burns. On nominal trajectory. Uh, the first burn is going to be called the entry burn. This is where we will relight the center engine, center uh, engine number nine, followed by engines number one and five. That way we'll have three M1D engines helping to slow down the first stage as it passes back into the Earth's atmosphere. The engine that you see on the right-hand side of the screen is optimized to perform in the vacuum of space. It can produce over 220,000 pounds of thrust, as opposed to the engines on the first stage, which are optimized to perform at sea level. Those can produce 190,000 pounds of thrust apiece. This view that you see on the left-hand side of the screen, that's actually inside the inner stage looking up. Uh, we mentioned those pusher rods uh, and that we saw a, a glimpse of those uh, with that video. Uh, you can also see some action on the left-hand side of the screen. We see some bursts of white gas. That is nitrogen from our attitude control system. That in conjunction with 
uh, those hypersonic griffins that you see on screen. You see two of them. There's actually four at the top of the first stage. Uh, those help to guide and steer and orient the first stage back to its targeted landing zone. Uh, today, it's going to be the drone ship. Just read the instruction. So we are about 40 seconds away, or 30 seconds away from that entry burn on the first stage. Second stage continues to perform nominally. Stage one, FTS has saved. Stage one, entry burn startup. And those engines have indeed relit. Uh, the first stage is currently slowing down before hitting the denser parts of the Earth's atmosphere. This burn is expected to last for about 30 seconds. Awesome, so that burn is in the books. We have one more to go on the first stage. That's a landing burn that's gonna happen. Start of terminal guidance. In about a minute. Um, we are gonna be listening here in about 20 seconds for a call out called SECO. That stands for Second Engine Cutoff One. The engine that you see on screen Thank will shut you. off its engine. Yeah, and then shortly after that, we'll listen for a call out for a nominal orbital insertion. Uh, that means that the second stage is entering its coast phase and is exactly where we want it to be before it relights its engine a little bit later on in the mission. And back shut down. So we did see that the MVAC stage one transonic shut down. Nominal orbit insertion. And there was the call out for nominal orbital insertion. The second stage is coasting for uh, a bit longer. And uh, we got views back of our first stage as it attempts its sixth landing on a drone ship. Landing burn. And we can start to see the drone ship. Landing like deploy. And there is that second stage with the Merlin vacuum engine off. And that's a view of the KPLO payload. Expected loss of signal. KPLO, deploy confirmed. And there you have it. Confirmation of successful separation uh, of KPLO from Falcon 9 second stage. Uh, KPLO still has a bit of work to do over the next After four and a half months before getting into a lunar orbit, but we do wish it safe travels. For us here at SpaceX, that is going to wrap up our webcast coverage. We want to thank the Korea Aerospace Research Institute for entrusting us with today's mission. And of course, all of our viewers, thank you for joining us, and we will see you next time.